Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are the owner of a wonderful Yamaha B2 amplifier but are experiencing uh, problems with the original selector functions, this is the right video for you to watch. Um, this is going to be relatively uh, a lengthy video uh, packed to technical details related to the Yamaha um, selector assembly and a permanent fix for the original pesky issues um, that most of you uh, B2 owners are experiencing. Uh, this video is uh, meant to be um, supplemental information for a seasoned technician to perform the changes that we're going to talk about. If uh, you are going and trying to do your own installation and you ruin your amp for any reason, uh, any repairs you're doing to your unit they are fully your responsibilities. If you don't have knowledge of how to work on a B2 or a VFED amplifier, please do not attempt to uh, do any modification on your own. Uh, contact me and I will refer you to a seasoned technician that is qualified to work on VFED amplifiers. All right, what we're looking at here, it's an original Yamaha B2 selector assembly. The primary reasons this um, selector assembly causes issues is because it uses open to air switches which in turn allow unwanted elements such as moisture, dust and uh, cigarette smoke for example to enter and slowly oxidize the contacts of the switch and ultimately render that switch inoperable. Additional issues that I've noted with this assembly is uh, this this uh, daughter board connector to the main board here these uh, uh, these are also known to cause issues um, desperate owners and technicians have actually eliminated them all together and ran wires in some of the units that I ran across this is not a unique case I've seen quite a few of this maybe half a dozen of units with um, with the original connectors uh, fully bypassed Anyhow, so um, in the past, the only two, two real uh, ways of going ab around the problems of this switch was either A, continuously clean it, and this particular assembly, for example, that I hold in my hand right now was clean on 1220, so not too long ago, and is already exhibiting uh, degradation of um, functionality on the switches. B was just to fully bypass the assembly, which kind of renders a bunch of buttons and knobs in your B2 to be um, unusable. Basically, you have a bunch of dummy buttons, and so um, additional to the fact that you lose all the functionality of them, right? So, and not neither of the two solutions was a uh, viable permanent fix. It was a compromise until recently. What you're looking at here right now, it's a uh, what I call version 2.0 of the uh, permanent replacement for the Yamaha B2 selector assembly. Um, the primary difference between this version and version 1.0, which I don't have right now here to share with you, but feel free to watch my video to see the slight differences, it's the ease of installation. Let's look at the differences between the um, uh, new and old selector, the origin and the original selector. Now, um, the uh, from a user perspective, from a front end user perspective, all the switches are the same. The functions remain the same. However, um, only the back end functionality has changed um, and has been improved. Now we're doing all the signal switches switching via low signal sealed relays. These are uh, specialized low signal sealed relays that will prevent uh, moisture and other unwanted elements to enter and cause um, signal uh, degradation. So from that perspective we address that the probably the biggest issue. Second we are I chose uh, not to put a plug in here I, I chose not I chose to to solder this so I eliminate any potential failure in the future uh, with um, uh, losing contact, right? This will have to be soldered on the back of the board um, by the installer. Uh, by, the, by the way, this is what, if you are going to end up with one of these um, 
selector assemblies this is what you would be receiving and you would have to mount it uh, together and I will get to that in a minute all right uh, the differences the improvements and differences don't stop there as you probably notice here uh, a set of uh, larger coupling capacitors than the originals the originals were uh, this tantalum capacitors sitting on the um, what I call the RCA board this is sitting at the, re at the rear of the unit um, we're not going no to no longer use this uh, we're no longer going to use this um, capacitors instead we're going to use some better quality pro polypropylene capacitors uh, these are DC blocking capacitors they're all in the amplifiers to block DC from entering the unit <coughs> And we're gonna put them. Uh, we're gonna keep them on this board instead of the rear board. And so there is one additional change, uh, which is quite major, um, and it is, uh, in my view, a substantial improvement over original design. And that is the ability to route signals straight from the rear RCA um, inputs all the way to the driver boards. And to do that. Uh, <coughs> I had to think of a way to separate the input one from input two in order for me to be able to a route directly to the driver boards b still retain every function that it's already there in the original um, in the original um, design so uh, let's talk about the direct uh, signal to driver boards which is going to essentially satisfy the um, audio files that don't want anything in their signal path right they don't want any capacitors any pesky potentiometers in their signal path well to do that um, for in the new assembly all you have to do is essentially leave your uh, leave your input selector on input one which is depressed uh, it's just the it's just the rest state of the switch um, and then at that point everything that you connect to the input one at the rear will go straight directly through to the driver board right the only thing that's going to be in the signal pad of that wire it's the contact within this relay which doesn't by the way uh it's in its rest state it doesn't have to be active uh to do that it doesn't have to do any switching right as a matter of fact if you're using input one and speaker selector a there will be no current inside any one of these relays so you have a signal going all the way to um, to the driver boards and then signal going all the way out to speaker set A there will be nothing uh, in a signal path no, con no other contacts in a single path that are no relays will have to be activated of course except the speaker relays which are not here are the rear of the amplifier all right uh, to um, get all the other functionality of the original unit in play you would have to use input 2 if you use input 2 then everything becomes available to you again you could um, couple or decouple you could go through these capacitors or not if you like you will have gain control uh, so this this attenuators will work on both sides on both um, on both speaker sets so you basically have all the original functions right uh, and this satisfies the purists the ones out there that I have used for this function such as myself I actually like um, I actually like to be able to uh, have two sets of speakers and control the gain on one of them if I uh, in, in on them if I needed to right I actually control the gain on both of them as a matter of fact if I use input 2 I could control the gain on on um, each set of speakers um, I also can uh, choose to use the coupling caps if I don't trust my preamplifier uh, you know the the role of this again is to block DC so if you bring in an unknown preamplifier in your system you may not want to plug it in input one right away and if you plug it in input two you definitely have to turn on your uh, your switch your um, normal what is called normal in your amplifier which means it's routing signal via the ca coupling capacitors uh, the DC means directly coupled so it's going to route a signal pass past these capacitors is going to bypass this okay um, 
in a nutshell, those are the functions of this selector assembly and the logic behind the changes I made. Um, so that, that's the summary. And that concludes basically the high level overview. Next, what we're going to talk about is the installation of this assembly. And we're going to first talk about the, um, the connectors um, that we have here, what needs to go where. Um, and uh, we're going to also talk about how you mount this on the plate quickly. So there are some details there, how you mount the whole assembly on one of the on one of these plates. Then after that, we're going to be looking at a um, unit that has this thing already assembled. So we could look at the rear to see uh, what changes need to be done there to this, uh, um, what I call the RCA board. There have to be, uh, there, there are some changes that need to be done at the rear of the unit. Okay, be right back. All right. So, on the right-hand side of the board, as you're looking from above, these are all these connectors, all these wire-to-board uh, connectors right here are going to handle some sort of a 12-volt um, DC. On the upper left side right here, center to left side, this is where all the audio uh, connections are happening. There is a reason, obviously, for the separation. Um, so um, keep that in mind. Okay, on the first air, on the first side right here, um, we are looking at um, connecting the yellow wire that used to come to the original selector board. That's a 12 volt plus 12 volt supply, and running a negative. Um, the black wire or any other color you like, I don't care. Uh, black is what I use. Running a wire from here all the way next to the yellow wire all the way to the center of your uh, power supply pseudo star ground, center ground. Um, you need to ground there and not to the signal ground here on this board to avoid any type of ground loops. Next in line is the relay A, relay B. This is taking the 12 volt from here and putting it either to relay A or relay B into the, uh, and those those relays are located, those are the speaker relays A, speaker relay B that are located on your um, main power supply of the amplifier at the rear of the amplifier, big fat ohm run relays. The cable that's color purple will be connected to relay A. That's the original color from the uh, from the amplifier and it's the same one you could use here just to reuse the wire. The color of the wire coming to relay B it's gray. Use that wire for gray. Next in line we have what it's marked on this board ACDC that is active coupling direct coupling. This it will control signal going through these capacitors. And uh, doesn't matter which color wire you use you need to run a couple of wires from here all the way to the to this switch right here, uh, which I'll we'll get to that in a minute, right? There are going to be changes done to this board, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But you need to run them to the back of this board. So when you're shorting this contacts, when you're shorting this two contacts right here, you will effectively turn on this relay. When you're turning on this relay, you are routing signal through these capacitors. If this relay is not activated it's in its normal state, these capacitors are being bypassed. Keep that in mind because that will clarify where you need to connect uh, to the switch, right? Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so that takes care of your. Uh, blocking capacitors, active, active, activating blocking capacitors or letting them be bypass. Moving to this upper section right here, you have input 2, which in your in the original unit uh, will, 
I, I believe they were the yellow jacket uh, uh, shielded cable that was running all the way to the rear of the amplifier. Connect that here. Input one, which was the green jacket shielded cable that was running to the rear of the amplifier. Connect that here. This is right out and left out. Left out, you could use the original cable length. It's the same. Uh, the same length works. For right out, the original uh, um, shielded cable is too short. You will need to get a piece of shielded cable that is about five inches at least, maybe I would say even six inches, and leave it a whip there. Leave a whip there. If it's too long, then cut it, but make it at least six inches long uh, for right out. Okay, those are the connectors to the board. Additional tidbits of information. I connect, helpful, helpful information is that I connect these cables from the top going up. The, the right side for the power, I connect them from the bottom. And they're marked on the bottom as well. So I connect them from the bottom. That works easier, right? All right. Those are the wire to board connections. Um, that, that was the wire to board connection summary. Next, let's talk. Let's look at how to put together this assembly. Well, what I found the easiest. So, as I mentioned, this is what you will be receiving. Three parts. Um, what I found the easiest is uh, to position the uh, daughter boards like this. Their holes are very. It's very easy to do, and then take the plate and kind of guide them and guide everything in at once. You can do it separately, so you got to do it like this, and then basically um, kind of hold them there, and then align your round hole. There's a round hole right here, and put your screw in, put your first screw in there, and um, get get that first screw in there, and um, then get your second screw in there, and you pretty much um, you could you could do this hands free now. I mean. Um, you don't have to um, stress about anything falling off. All right, the first thing to do is make sure that the sides, the board, I like the original, the board width and the plate width are the same. And so when you're holding this in your hand, make sure your screws are fairly loose so that you're lining this up. This will help you when you're lining your plate. So this will fall in the center, so those buttons are not going to rub on your plate. There's very little room in these buttons on the plate, so if it's not centered properly, you're going to have a problem. All right, so to kind of tighten in your, your, first, your first screw, which is the one to the left that's got a round hole, and leave this one loose a little bit, and now you look on the back, and you, and you want to guide the, the, this to be parallel. You know, you, you have to, this, this has a little play, a little play, just guide it so it stays parallel to this line right here, visually. There's no science to this. Um, just guide it so it's parallel. And then, then give it a give it a tweak to the screws. Then now you could go ahead and, and put your uh, washers. Um, put your washers and your nuts over these things over the uh, pots. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with that, but bottom line is once they look like this, then you go ahead and solder the back of the pins. You want to solder now, not early. The reason is there may be a little change, a little play based on your installation. So I left a few millimeters, maybe a couple of millimeters of play at the bottom. You'll see it. It's really hard for me to show that in the camera, but when you receive it, you will see that this data boards are short by a couple of millimeters. They don't reach the board directly that's intentional right um, so that will give you enough play for you to you know adjust this properly in case you need to adjust anything further so uh, keep that in mind okay so now that your assembly looks like this which um, there you go you have um, basically two um, uh, two assemblies now that look the same but they're really different in the back all right so once you get it to the state you're ready to install it, and um, then you need to go to the back, to the rear of the amplifier to uh, take care of this RCA. So RCA board. So we'll put this selector on the side for a minute. 
we already talked about all the wires they should already you should already have connected to this um, uh, to this thing. Uh, you could actually go ahead and put your four screws in here and mount this back into the unit. At the rear, we are looking at the original board uh, for the for the RCAs. Here again, it's your input one, input two, your uh, coupling, decoupling uh, switch, and this section right here is for external meters. So you really don't need any of this. Um, well, you could use the RCAs if you want to use the original. You will need actually the switch, but you don't need the board, right? You don't need the board. You will need the switch. The reason is it's uh, really hard to find a switch to the same pitch, so I didn't find new switches. But fear not, uh, this switch in the new function will work exponentially longer than it did originally. The reason is originally it was switching signal, low current, right? So any small oxidation that was happening here was, was uh, impacting your sound. Now what this thing does is switching 12 volts to a relay coil. You know, that's, that's a different story. Most likely uh, not as sensitive to 12 volts. Additional to that, what I found is I use two contacts to connect my wires, so I have double the contacting uh, surface and much more, um, um, you know, uh, actually a lot less chances of anything to go wrong, I should have said. All right, so for me to um, install this, I usually just cut this board in um, about half. I toss this PCB out and I either A, install uh, new RCAs and I install the uh, switch separate. And I also clean the switches uh, for the meters and reinstall just this section, right? Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna look at the um, an actual unit and see how this whole thing looks like. All right, so what we have here right now, it's one of these uh, selector assemblies already fitted into a B2. Uh, again, from the front uh, view, uh, it looks the same as the original. Um, there is one change that I should have called out earlier. The mounting screws here, these are four millimeter screws. The original ones are three millimeters. Uh, the reason I use four millimeters is related to the type of uh, screw to board connector that I used so you will need to enlarge the uh, the holes um, that go through this plate to allow for a four millimeter to pass through so remember that that's something I forgot to mention also what I also I forgot to mention uh, when you're receiving uh, an assembly you may have different color relays or different color capacitors uh, the quality is the same basically comparable um, the reason they may be different color, the white ones, for example, the relay that are white are uh, Omron, the uh, black ones are from Panasonic. They're both extremely good relays, the same quality basically. It is just that with the supply chain issues these days, I will take what I can. Uh, I'm not picky. Price-wise, they're also the same, so it's not a matter of price or, or anything else other than availability. Same thing goes for these capacitors. You may find that I could e either use Jensen or um, Mondorf. Equally good. They're basically polypropylene capacitors. They're supposed to be neutral, not add or take anything from the sound. So uh, they're going to be the same, basically. So um, if you're confused why you're seeing see here a color, you may end up with a different color. That's what is, uh, you know, it's perfect example is here. The selector we worked out with earlier was all black relays. N now we have here some white ones. Okay, so as I call out, uh, your signal uh, cables are uh, mounted from the top. Uh, the um, power cables are mounted from the bottom. You can't really see that here, but you could see there's no cable coming from the top. As we move to the rear of the unit and discuss uh, and look at and look at the uh, modified original um, uh, PCB, which is missing pretty much half of it. Uh, you could see here that we have the um, um, the uh, meter control uh, portion that remains. I ground right here. We need to keep this ground 
um, uh, connected uh, the original board was carrying the grout through the RCA from the RCA to the to the to the chassis to the original uh, ground point in the chassis we need to keep that same uh, ground in order to avoid any type of unwanted um, ground loops you could see that um, uh, this unit for example has replaced or uh, has um, uh, different RCAs and I, I grounded them here on a copper bar and then I grounded my wires to the copper bar. For the switch, as I mentioned, uh, in my instructions, these wires are, in my written instructions, these wires are orange, in this case are brown, it really don't matter. I usually um, bridge across two pins and I start my contacts, I skip the first one and I contact, I put my first wire to the second set of pins and my uh, um, my I'm sorry my first wire the second set of pins and my uh, second wire to the third set of pins that way it uh, the switch orientation will match the rear silk screen on the back panel which is uh, again normal versus um, direct directly coupled all right this concludes this um, installation video and Please don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. I look forward to providing additional videos for you as time permits. Bye-bye.